Now that we had a chance to share and discuss some of our favorite leaders and their characteristics, we are now going to dive in and learn some defined leadership styles. So this lecture will outline three main leadership styles. And I think it's important to point out that there are many different styles of leadership, but for this class, we're just going to go over the three main ones that contrast from one another drastically. So to begin learning leadership styles, we must first know what the definition of leadership is. And if you think back to our discussion on our favorite leaders, everyone had different characteristics that they loved. Some loved them because that they were extremely charismatic and truly cared about their followers. Some were humorous and others had extreme passion and positivity. So thinking about all those different leadership characteristics we discussed, you can really understand the versatility of leaders. And it's the same way with the definition of leadership. There's actually not one clear definition because it's so abstract. There isn't even a universal accepted definition for leadership. So the best way to look at leadership is that it's a process that involves three things. First, leaders, second, followers, and lastly, situations. And the difference between a follower and a leader is that leaders influence followers. The relationship between leaders and followers is dynamic, fluid, and ongoing. Someone will be a leader or a follower at one point in their life. A leader can influence others, be influenced, set direction, follow direction, provide support, or receive support. Leadership is not a single role that is enacted by a single individual. Instead, it's a process that emerges as various roles are enacted. And those roles, and the people filling them, can change as the challenges change. And since leadership is such a broad term, communication experts have defined multiple leadership styles that explain different ways people express the ways they influence their followers. So the first style of leadership we're going to talk about is autocratic leadership. And this style of leadership is known as a highly structured leadership and is most identifiable in a military setting and a chain of command environment. This type of leadership has high concern for task objectives and low concern for people or relationship objectives. This means that an autocratic leader cares more about the work that is getting done than how the people who are doing the work are. Autocratic leaders have the drive for absolute power, command, compliance, and conformity. Jobs and duties are well-defined, controlled, and processed through this leader. In failing to comply, autocratic leaders turn to punishment. So there's four main characteristics to identify an autocratic leader, and those are, first, the leader makes all important decisions. Second, the leader is primarily concerned with task accomplishment, not the happiness or satisfaction of their followers. Third, the leader maintains considerable social distance from their followers. And lastly, the leader motivates their followers by punishment or a threat of punishment rather than by rewards. And so autocratic leadership is mostly known for having low importance on relationships. So now we're going to look at a style that takes into account their followers and have high importance with their relationships. So the next style of leadership we're going to look at is facilitative leadership. And this style of leadership is directed through persuasion, collaboration, and engagement. Facilitative leaders are often found as educators, religious leaders, consultants, and coaches. And there are three main characteristics, again, to identify a facilitative leader. And those are that they involve followers as much as possible in creating the group's vision and purpose. They carry out the visions and purposes determined. And lastly, they build a productive and cohesive team. Next, I'd like to read a quote about facilitative leadership from a communication researcher, Fran Rees, and she states, The leader who can take the role of a facilitator blends his or her role of a visionary decisive leader with that of a listening and empowering leader. As a facilitative leader, he or she involves followers as much as possible in creating the group's vision and purpose, carrying out the vision and purpose, and building a productive and cohesive team. Facilitation can be seen as a leadership approach. In conclusion, facilitative leadership has high focus on tasks, 
and high focus on relationship motives. Laissez-faire leadership, our third and final leadership style we're going to cover today, is the complete opposite. So laissez-faire leadership is known as a leadership style that is hands-off with their followers. This type of leader has a strong belief that their followers know their jobs, so they just leave them alone. They also provide little information or resources. And laissez-faire leaders do not clearly state their goals and objectives, so their followers just have to assume them. And laissez-faire leaders rarely have a defined plan to accomplish tasks. Again, laissez-faire leaders and facilitative leaders are the complete opposite, as in facilitative leadership focuses high on task objectives and relationship objectives, where laissez-faire leadership has low focus on tasks and low focus on relationships. The three main characteristics to identify a laissez-faire leader is that first, the leader maintains a low profile and has a minimal to no communication. Second, they have low control on followers and their objectives and task goals. And lastly, there's minimal participation, involvement, information, and resources from a laissez-faire leader. In conclusion, the main takeaways or best way to remember these three leadership styles is to know what they are focused on or their objectives. So an autocratic leader has high focus on tasks, low focus on relationships. A facilitative leader has both high focus on tasks and relationships. And the complete opposite, laissez-faire leadership, they have low focus on relationships and low focus on tasks. Again, these three styles are just scratching the surface with leadership. There are many other styles. So next, we're going to do an activity that will allow us to identify and analyze two of these three leadership styles.